there are 10 filter circuits in the motor, and combined with the two energy sources, they give a total of 20 separate components to be used in building up speech sounds. But now let's have Mr. Garrett and Miss Harper actually show us what the voter can do with these 20 separate sounds. Well, we've heard the voter make a word, and by combining words, of course, we get a sentence. For example, Helen, will you have the voters say, she saw me? She saw me. That sounded awfully flat. How about a little expression? Say the sentence in answer to these questions. Who saw you? She saw me. Whom did she see? She saw me. Well, did she see you or hear you? She saw me. Now, so far, you have only heard the voter speak in one voice. But the voter has other voices which he can use when Miss Harper makes a simple adjustment in his mechanism. Helen, will you have the voter say, Greetings, everybody? Greetings, everybody. Now, will you have him repeat that in a high voice? Greetings, everybody. And now, in his best face. When a boy's voice changes, he's never quite sure whether it's going to be a tenor or a bass. And the voter, being still a comparatively young man, also has his moments of uncertainty. Let's hear him recite, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Mary Had a Little Lamb. Gosh, voter, you sounded awfully dismal. Snap out of it. Let's hear you laugh. Okay. Ah. A minute ago, I said the voter was still a comparatively young man. But that last laugh of his makes me wonder whether I might not have been wrong. Do you really feel as old as you sound? Yes. Yeah. I... <laughs> well, I certainly feel sorry for you. Now, perhaps you noticed there was a peculiar quality in that voice you've not heard before. That was the vibrato. We noticed a little while ago that a vowel sustained without inflection didn't sound human. It sounded this way. Uh. Now, if we put vibrato into that same tone, we get this. Uh. And that, as you noticed, is really a singing tone. Yes, Voter can not only talk, but he can sing. Test your voice for us, Voter. Uh, 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 uh. Well, if you've quite recovered from your mood of depression of a few minutes ago, suppose you sing a song for us, will you? Yes, certainly. Well, how about Old Lang Syne? Old Lang Syne? Okay. She called her name and be for God and never know me mine. She called her name and be for God and her name and her name. I'm sure that if I sang that song, I wouldn't sound as good as the voter. Miss Harper, I've been wondering whether our listeners realize how many motions you have to make in the production of a single word. Can you give us some idea? Well, for example, in producing the word concentration on the voter, I have to form 13 different sounds in succession, make five up and down movements of the wrist bar, and vary the position of the foot pedal from three to five times according to what expression I want the voter to give the word. And, of course, all this must be done with exactly correct timing. About how long did it take you to become an expert in operating the voter? It took me about a year of constant practice. This is about the average time required in most cases. How many girls are there who can operate the voter? The company tried out about 320 girls, and out of this number, 28 girls finally became expert operators. Well, that seems like a very small number. Just why is that? I can answer that, Dr. Carwell, by saying that in operating the voter, a girl needs a peculiar combination of particular talent, which is not too common. Mr. Garrett, does the voter speak any foreign language? Oh, yes, the voter can talk practically any language that its operator can talk. Well, suppose we try a little French on the voter. Can he say, parlez-vous français? I do français. Splendidly done. Merci, merci. You see, Doctor, the voter can do practically anything that can be done with a human voice. Well, that certainly covers a lot of ground, Mr. Garrett. I know people who can imitate animals. Can the voter do that, too? Oh, pretty well. For instance, here's voter's imitation of a cow. Uh... 
And here's a pig. <laughs> Have you given the voter any real education yet? Uh, just what do you mean by that, Dr. Caldwell? Well, for example, does he know his alphabet? I'll let you judge that for yourself. Well, that certainly proves uh, voters' versatility. And now I'd like to ask just what could see for the voter, Mr. Garrett. How can it be practically applied? Well, Dr. Caldwell, we don't anticipate any commercial use for the voters. It was built for an educational exhibit for the New York World's Fair and San Francisco Exposition. However, it is a byproduct of development that we are going on and, and doing in the Bell Telephone Laboratory. Will you please make the voters say for our Eastern listeners, good evening, radio audience. Good evening, radio audience.